morning. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good, good. I like the uh like the hat to begin with. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. I saw that you're originally from uh Ontario, right? Yeah, yeah. Are you uh are you a Canadian guy as well? Um actually dual citizen. My uh family is uh, originally from Quebec, so Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Did you I was interested to know, do you happen to know uh Greg Sutton by any chance? Uh obviously know the name. I don't know him personally. Okay. Uh, All right. Know who he is. So nice. Yeah, I played with him at, at Concordia. Okay. Gotcha. But um awesome. Yeah. So I just wanted to say I really appreciate you taking uh, you know, the time out of your day just to um, you know, uh chat with us for 30 minutes because I know you're a busy guy. So if you kind of want to introduce uh, to the listeners um, a little bit about your playing career and uh, where you are now. Yeah, so I grew up um, in the Toronto area. So I went through Toronto FC's Academy um, when I was younger. Um, after TFC's Academy, went and played four years at Drake University, which is in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, Division One school. Um, Straight after college, uh, ended up with Sporting Kansas City's organization. Played two years there for their USL team. Um, and then moved to North Carolina for a year. Um, and then after my year with North Carolina, I kind of kept in touch with um, Sporting Kansas City and was actually looking kind of for a new playing experience. Um, but it just kind of worked out that initially the academy uh, goalkeeping position was open and I knew I always wanted to get into coaching, but I think the the hardest, hardest question to answer is, is when, uh, cause for me, it was like my body and mind was still good to go. Um, but just in terms of life decisions, it made a lot of sense to take the position. Um, so I did that last year and now this year, uh, moved up with the uh, USL team with Sporting Kansas City too. So it's kind of been a weird uh, circle of events in terms of I played in this exact position under the same coach as well uh, three years prior. And now, now I'm on the staff uh, as the goalkeeper coach. So uh, small world, but obviously really happy with uh, how things have um, turned around as well. Yeah, definitely. That's that's definitely awesome. So um, one of my first questions for you, and I'd love to hear this from uh, your perspective. So what does winning mean to you and how could you describe the process of it? So um, and by winning, I kind of mean not only games, but also creating a successful uh, environment, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, I think, well, I'll, I'll tell you this, one of the one of the biggest core values here at Sporting Kansas City, especially with the first team, um, is is just um, having a winning mentality. Um, the biggest thing that I find with with youth sports, just in general, is that you have kids that uh, are talented, uh, have all the tools to be successful, um, but they're missing, as you would kind of say, that winning mindset or that ability to compete. Um, and that's a difficult thing for, for coaches to, to bring out of a kid. Um, but you see more and more as you get to the next levels that, um, people who are successful are kind of ruthless in their mentality of not only being able to compete, but finding ways to just win. Um, another day you're in a profession that is judged based on outcomes, obviously different entities, they're, um, intention is different like the academy system and two team and things like that but it all works into when you get to the first team it doesn't matter how you win it's about winning games um so i think it's important for for young kids to start to develop that winning mindset and it's not something that happens overnight it's something that you have to work at and um I think there's a big kind of debate going on right now of whether you're born with it, is it created through the environment that you're uh, put into? Um, to be honest, I don't know if I have the exact answer or, or every single one of the kids that I'd be working with would be, you know, 
winning every game that they they're a part of. I think there's a mix of having that mentality and also having the the tools to be successful. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's um that's that's always been interesting to me um, as I kind of continue through my playing career is kind of getting people's uh, kind of opinion and view on on what it means to win in the process of winning. So it's something I've kind of always found interesting interesting and something that I feel like is, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's very important. So now moving uh, more towards the, the football side the, um, of it, if, in your opinion, what is one of the most underrated qualities uh, in a goalkeeper? I'd uh, really be interested to hear this from your perspective. Yeah, I think, I mean, everyone always has their, I feel like prototypical DNA for a goalkeeper it's like six foot six great shot stopper great with his feet really good with crosses can read the game well um I think it's very very difficult to find that complete package that everyone can sit back and if you ask them what their like their DNA of a perfect goalkeeper is the response for the most part would be something similar to that um but I think it's important to kind of look at what a team needs um and especially like if you're looking at a team um, like us, we may not need that profile of a goalkeeper. Um, one of the things that I've noticed that separates guys from the next level is just their ability to be connected with the team in terms of playing out the back. Um, I'd say our model of play demands that um, of goalkeepers. And when we, when we see, uh, I guess guys be successful or not successful in this environment. I think that would be the one thing that, that jumps out to me as um, kind of that special quality, if you would, um, is just not only the decision-making of when to play out, um, but obviously the execution piece of, uh, you know, are we playing out the back short? Is it a clip ball? Are we going long and behind? So I think distribution is kind of the, the underlying factor for me. Yeah, that's that's definitely awesome. And I'm just curious to kind of like piggyback off of what you said. Um, so when you were talking about, uh, you know, the, what separates people um, from like making it and not making it at that next level, besides, um, you know, playing with your feet, maybe speaking more towards, I guess, maybe a little bit mentality and then also skill wise, have you noticed anything over the years as a player? as a coach that um, is a determining factor from, you know, say a goalkeeper that makes it to the next level and that doesn't, is it a mixture of things? Have you noticed it to be one solid component that really stands out or is it one of those things that it's a little bit of everything? Yeah, I, I, honestly, I think it would go back to the point that we were talking about, like having that winning mentality. Um, like we, you see goalkeepers all the time that are talented and, have all the tools in terms of what we spoke about, about fitting into a, a really good goalkeeping DNA. Um, but there's not always guys who, you know, instill the confidence on the team of when they are playing, that they have that winning mentality, that they're competing, whether it's a possession-based game, whether it's small-sided, whether it's 11 v 11, where they're just like, you look at this guy and he's an absolute animal. Um, I'll give you an example. Like one of the, one of the goalkeepers at our club, John Polskamp, like when he, he's just turned 20 years old, but he carries himself like he's a 35 year old experienced veteran. Um, just the presence that he has, if he's playing possession game based games, he wants to win him in small side is he's an absolute animal. He has that kind of winning mindset, even just knowing it's small sided within the, within the squad. Um, so I think that's something that is hard to find. Um, you try and as a coach put players in an environment that naturally brings that out. But I think there is uh, elements of it where it's just the person and a little bit of product of their environment, but also just the way they are as a human being. Um, so I think, especially with goalkeepers and, and the importance that they have on the game, um, going back to the point of look, does this kid want to win? Is he competitive? Does he have that drive and that presence to, to give the team confidence? Uh, that's something that I know 
in the professional game, you, you look at, uh, of does this kid, does this kid win? Is he able to compete? And does he add value to the team? Um, not only through his skill set, but the way his mindset is and his mentality is. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. And it's another thing that um, I found interesting or I found interested um, in for myself is that um, when you start to see, like when you start to go higher and higher up the levels, the step from like good to great is so small. And that, um, you know, like when you're kind of developing in your younger uh, days, like college and, and all that, you're making kind of bigger progress because the progress to be made is bigger. But when you get to the professional level, a lot of times guys are trying to get, it seems like 1% better, um, you know, and that, that margin to get that 1% is so much harder. And um, I'm curious to see what do you think are some of the kind of habits that you've noticed, uh, you know, both ways as a player uh, for yourself and as a coach for yourself, um, what has been some of the habits that you've seen other players or yourself carry that kind of um, determines you getting that little 1% better, whether it's every day or, or whatnot? Yeah, I think that's a, a really important kind of reflection piece to, to hit on is once you're getting to that higher level, the margins are a lot smaller. Uh, you can notice good players at the club level, at the high school level, at the college level a little bit easier. Um, I mean, you and I both played in college and you could identify a very good college player versus just like a squad guy because the margins between them um, are a little bit bigger. I think at the pro level, it's a tricky, it's a tricky question because it's, it's the question that I guess as coaches, you're trying to find the golden answer to what, what separates one, one pro from being successful from the other. Um, but I think just based on my experiences, the guys who are really successful are, are, are pros in every aspect of their life. Um, and it's not just when they feel like it. Um, it's a consistent, the biggest thing I would say is at the next level, there's a, there's a huge like consistency piece. Um, the players have special tools to help make the team win, but, uh, it's reliable. It's one of those things that's consistent. And I think that's built in the foundation of what they do on their daily life. Like they come into training, um, their, their performances are consistent, uh, what they do away from the field in order to make sure that they're successful uh, in terms of recovery, nutrition, getting in a good headspace, um, making the right decisions in terms of what you should and shouldn't be doing as a good pro. Uh, I think those all uh, tie into like the complete package of these guys are cons consistent, reliable players and they're constantly doing the right things as pros every single day. Um, Cause I've, I've seen it with, with guys before that it's, it's easy to find your way out of this business. Um, it's hard to get in, but it's even, I think it's pretty easy to find your way out just based on your daily decisions and what you're doing uh, to improve yourself as a player, like 1% every day. So that's awesome. That's, I think that's, you know, a lot of people find a lot of value from that. And I definitely have to agree with that. Um, I'm still playing. I actually got invited to uh, preseason with uh, Chattanooga FC and NISA uh, this coming August. And I've noticed that That's throughout, awesome. yeah, thank you. Uh, so throughout my time as a player, um, I actually did a video on this in the past. There's a big difference kind of between motivation and dedication. And I think a lot of times people get that, uh, those two mixed up because motivation is you know it's easy to do something when you're motivated whether you listen to music or this you know like motivational kind of hype video but when you don't feel like it when your body hurts when things aren't going your way to get up and put that same amount of effort in as if you were winning and as if things were going right can be very difficult but I found that's probably made a huge that's probably made one of the biggest uh leaps and bounds in terms of my development was kind of having that mindset switch and something I found that I feel lucky that I found earlier on, maybe sometimes, uh, maybe a little quicker than most people. So that's, that's a really good answer. Um, yeah. One, one of the, sorry to interrupt you. One of the things that is big for us is, uh, just guys that have an intrinsic drive, like 
at the end of the day, as coaching staff, you can prepare, prepare the environment for a guy. Um, but Monday to Friday, you prepare the environment. And then on Saturday, they go out and showcase. And it, uh, to be honest, as a coaching staff, you have an influence on the game a little bit in terms of like the tactical decisions, the lineup you put out, things like that. But uh, at the end of the day, it's it's the players that go out on, on the Saturday on the match day and they're the ones who have to perform. And I think if I look at some of the successful pros that I've been around, they've all kind of had one similar feature of they just have an intrinsic drive. Like their their personalities could be different. You could have one guy who, you know, is, is outwardly spoken and confident. You could have another guy who's a little bit more of an introvert. But at the same time, they they both have that intrinsic drive in their own way where when it becomes time to, to perform and get the job done, um, that they have that inner motivation and it doesn't take a coach or an environment or whatever it may be to, to make them successful. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I think that's, that's, that's really true. And I kind of just, you know, uh, almost kind of saying, as you said, for me too, I think one of the things that I always try to, you know, tell um, younger players um, is that like, I, I never found myself to be uh, like naturally gifted at all. I just felt like I was almost naturally gifted in terms of my work ethic because I didn't come from a big, you know, uh, soccer family. And I, you know, didn't start playing until a little later on uh, in terms of, you know, especially where kids start playing today. So for me, I always try to, you know, tell people as much as I can that uh, that that mindset and that work ethic uh, and that drive is probably one of the most important things, you know, to get uh, for you uh, and able to get to where you want to go. So that's awesome that you said that. Um, so moving on, uh, kind of from a more of a, a coaching perspective, how, um, how what is it like when, you know, you kind of are starting that new season and you're, I guess, um, you know, it kind of reiterating on what was said before, um, you know, as a coach, especially like when you're working with the goalkeepers, how important is it for you to um, kind of set the tone for the mindset? Or is it kind of like what you said, you are expecting the goalkeepers to kind of have that and you work with them on that? Yeah, I think it's it's a combination of both. Like there's there's a minimum standard that you require from the guys. And I think no matter the level that I coach at, I, I always say to the guys, uh, the things that are a minimum for me are having a good work ethic. So working hard, um, having a good attitude, um, and then having a good application to whatever's being said. Um, and I've always said, if you can bring me those three things consistently on every day, like that's, just, that's just the minimum for me. If, if you're struggling to have a positive attitude, if you're struggling to have a good work ethic, if you're struggling to uh, apply the things that are being told to you, you then you won't be successful. Um, so I guess going back to your question, that, that uh, from the players is just the minimum. And then it's just like, uh, it's just like a teacher or anything like that. You're trying to create the best environment for them to be successful um and i think it's different year to year like there's especially with the goalkeeping position you have to figure out early on what makes the guys that you're working with successful mm -hmm. obviously you design your session plan based on you know opposition scout their own individual development plan what they need to work on what they're good at things like that those are all contributing factors but i think the best coaches and goalkeeper coaches are able to distinguish okay, I've got a player here. This is what he needs to be successful in, in terms of communication, in terms of the reps that he receives on a weekly basis and ensuring that that environment is the one that you provide for him. Um, and the challenge with the professional game is you're, all, you're constantly dealing with different guys. Uh, as you know, it's you know, it's not like a youth club where you're traveling with the guys from U12 all the way to U16 and you're um, working with them. It, it, it can be a revolving door at times and you're working with new personalities and um, elements in their game have changed and things like that. But uh, I think one of the things that jumps out to me is just you're going to have 
maybe three or four goalkeepers in a session or in camp with you. And they're all going to have their own style of learning. They're all going to have their own intrinsic motivation. And it's being able to tap into that and figuring out, okay, I've got this guy here and this is what he needs for me within the environment that I create based on communication, based on the reps that he needs. So yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's one of those things like there's a, definitely a minimum. And if you're not hitting the minimum, you're not even uh, going to be uh, successful in the environment. But then once you create the environment, that's probably one thing that I look to is you've created the environment. You you can influence what's being done. You can influence the energy in the, um, in the environment, but also the communication of, uh, am, am I working with a guy that really needs a fire lit under him a little bit or d- is there a guy that you know works well when I communicate on a one-on-one basis pull him aside and be like hey this is what's successful this is what I need you to change um, and I think that's one of the hardest challenges of a coach especially when you're at the pro level and you're working with guys who've been around and have you know personalities and maybe a little bit more confidence than at the youth level it's figuring out ways to to communicate with them as well. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'm just kind of going off of that. So catering to, like you kind of said, the goalkeepers and figuring out their learning styles, does that translate into, you know, a pregame warmup uh, per se as well? Or is it kind of like you have the set uh, pregame warmup, every goalkeeper does that? Or is the pregame warmup a little bit more individual? So if so-and-so starting, you know, this is what he does to feel confident. Yeah, one of the... One of the interesting things uh, of being with a two team is you have obviously more goalkeepers than not playing. Usually like you, you don't, unless you're an independent team, you probably have a rotation of guys. Um, And that's one of the interesting things with me that I've noticed is I have a set uh, warm up based on when I was a player. But if I was working with the Academy guys and when you're working with younger guys, usually they don't have a like set warm up. So you kind of just say, are you good with the warm up that I'm running? This is what it looks like. And usually it's like, yeah, it's that's fine. But uh, with our pro guys, everyone has a, a different warm up. Tim Melia has a different warm up than John Polskamp than Macintosh. So it's just figuring out because uh, at the end of the day, you're just like a supplemental role to them, um, both on a daily basis. But then especially on game day, if if they need a five minute warm up and only need certain reps, then that's what you're going to give them to be successful. If they need to go out early and run through a 40 minute, 40 minute, you know, handling session, or they need extra reps with distribution at the end of the day, that's your job of creating the environment to make them successful. And each guy's different. So uh, it, it's interesting to see for the most part, the, the elements of it are the same. It just might be some guys need, extra reps of handling some guys might want distribution or the types of distribution that they're doing um is kind of unique to their themselves but i guess everyone has their own kind of routine uh for the most part once you get to this level Mm, that's awesome that's awesome so to start wrapping up here because i know you're tight on time and you have a lot to do um, one of the last questions is, so as you said, you kind of transitioned uh, from a player uh, to a coach and then started coaching with the same organization and staff that you had as a player. Uh, what has been like some of the, you know, uh, biggest differences of what you thought it would be like to com- uh, compared to what it actually is? Yeah, I think the biggest it's a really good question. I think the biggest difference for me, I think when you're on the playing side of things, um, you don't recognize the amount of work that goes in on the coaching side of things. Um, and I think every, every like staff is different in terms of their preparation and, and what they do. But um, I think staffs that are successful, obviously put in a lot of work and different elements in uh, their preparation and session design and things like that. Um, cause when you're a player, look, you're at home, you drive into training, you do your pregame or pre training prep, you train, you do your recovery, whatever it is, and then you go home. Um, but you never really see the backroom side of things of, 
you know, there's a session design. Now we're analyzing the session. Now we've got an opposition to look at. We have to break down the film from them. How are we going to exploit them? What are we doing well? What are they doing well? And there's a lot of elements that go into that of uh, just organization and preparation. Um, and as a player, you never really see that side of it just because you're not exposed to it. You think you just show up to training and, you know, the grids are mapped out. And small sided games are already set up and thing, whatever it may be. Um, but that's one thing I've noticed on the coaching side. Like if you're doing things right, there's a lot of details that go into it. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. That's very interesting. I've started, you know, coaching a little bit like with goalkeepers. And I, that's funny you said that obviously nowhere near to the level that you're at, but um, just, I've noticed it as well. Like when I have to go set up a session, I'm like, wow, this is not as easy as just, you know, showing up and it's there, you know, you have to know what you want to work on and put stuff together. So that's, that's very interesting. So to finish it all off, um, I'm very curious to see if you could change one thing about the, you know, football system in the U S and like, and or Canada, what would it be? Yeah. Um, <laughs> again that's a good question i think the biggest thing for me is just like this day and age i don't know if it's uh the world but i've noticed a lot with like north america as well is there's players that come through that just have a sense of like entitlement to them it's mm -hmm. it's tough because like all these environments give them everything that they need like for example you've got young kids who are treated like pros and have all the resources of pros um, and at times kids take that for granted uh, and I think going back to I think the big thing with with this is talking about the mindset of what these kids have um, and I don't know if yes you're creating all these resources for them but are at the end of the day are you hindering them because they're unable to go through adversity that maybe when we were younger we didn't have the infrastructure or the resources that the kids do now um, so I think that's the challenge that coaching staffs are now recognizing, um, especially at these organizations that have resources available to them. It's how do we obviously create the professional environment for these kids, but then, you know, create that almost false adversity or put them through moments that are going to cause them to grow a little bit um, while still maintaining that professional uh, atmosphere. Um, and I think at least for me as a coach, that's one of the things that I've struggled with is I, I look at these kids and sometimes they don't realize how well they have it. Um, and you want to provide the best environments for them, but at the same time, you want to figure out ways to develop not only the player, but I think, as you know, developing the person is just as important, mm -hmm. uh, and the environment creates that. So. I think that's that's the biggest thing that I would change for the infrastructure. Don't don't ask me how I would do that because <laughs> I have absolute. I mean, I have ideas, but I think that's that's a question that's constantly going around. Organizations that um, are professionally run and have resources is how do you maintain the environment that you have and continue to to grow at one percent every day, but also mm -hmm. challenging the person within it. Um, I think that's, that's again, the golden question of coaching is of how to create the environment, but also challenging the person as well. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And it's interesting you said that because um, from, from when I was in my youth days, I always tell uh, myself and other people that the best thing that happened to me in that period of time was being rejected by the New England Revolution Academy because I had a bunch of friends who made it. I was training with the academy, things were going really well. And then all of a sudden some other kid uh, came in and then it was just done and lights out. And so, you know, I think like you said, that mentality, almost like a grit mentality. And for me, like I said, I think not making that academy at that time, it, 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 in the moment, it seemed like such a setback. And I went home, I cried, I was like, I'm done. But like the next very next day, I was like, told myself, like, listen, I'm going to email every single, you know, academy on the East Coast. And it doesn't matter, like where I end up, I'm just going to play. And I ended up doing it. And I ended up getting to play academy, uh, you know. And so I think that, you know, I do definitely agree that there is that kind of importance of, you know, 
learning how to push through and, and, and face adversity, you know, and getting to that goal kind of no matter what. But that's that's interesting you said that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just, that's pretty much it. So I just want to say, you know, thank you for, you know, coming on. It, it's definitely awesome to have you on. I think a lot of people are going to find a lot of value um, and, you know, good luck tonight. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. I, I appreciate uh, you having me on and it's always good to, to talk football with, with new people. So, uh, and especially if they're, they have Canadian ties as well. Uh, <laughs> awesome <laughs> all right yeah man awesome uh good luck tonight and like i said thanks for uh joining thank you thank you have a good one man i appreciate thank it thank you you as well